So if you're standing at home or if you're doing anything right now and you're listening to this, stand up, keep yourself nice and tall and close to your body. Don't let them flare out, but close to your body, just throw your hands back loose. I like to say hands. I don't like to say arms because when you say arms, people's brains turn on the muscle in their arms and then they tense there a little bit. I want my hands to throw. And when you do that, if you have good mobility, your hands are going to get to about your shoulder blade height behind you. And you're probably going to feel that little pingy stretch right under your shoulders or between your shoulders and your chest, right? But that motion has to happen. And a lot of people give the key of, hey, try to touch your wrists when you go back with your fingers. So if you throw your hands back behind you and your palms kind of face up behind you, they say touch your wrist to give you that little bit of extra stretch. And it kind of helps put the wrist into a relaxed position instead of, you know, holding your hands like, what is an anchor man or what do I do with my hands? Oh, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> So standing up tall, that's the key there is, is feeling that stretch. And if you're not feeling that stretch during your jump, then you know you're not using your arms hard enough, violent enough, fast enough. Okay. So. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Better Beach Podcast. My name is Brandon. We got the team back together today. Last episode, it was just me going over a lot of body control and how that can change your just your feeling and confidence in games. Mm. You know, I, so that's kind of what I focused on last episode. One of my favorite Q and A sessions that we've had. So I just set some time at the end, and we had a lot of really good questions. So I'm hoping we can continue that going forward. So as the episode's going on, if you guys have anything that pops into your mind, please write it in the chat because mm. we obviously have some ideas of what we want to focus on. We've been doing this for a while now, and we have some of the pain points and troubles that we think a lot of people need to hear, but we don't think of everything. So anything that you guys have, we appreciate and it helps us interact with you guys. And that's yep. kind of what we've realized is, is really important and really fun for us is that not only are we creating all this material to help everybody get better, but the interaction component is is pretty important for both you and I. So any chance you get, just write something in the chat. Even if you're just saying, hey, like, thanks, whatever. We love seeing it. Yeah. And uh, I'm in a particularly good mood today. Why? Tell me about it. This is our St. Patty's Day podcast. It's not St. Patty's Day yet, but tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, my favorite holiday. And uh, I'm fired up. You're at the end of 75 hard. So we I need am. to, uh, should we say, enjoy ourselves for one day. And uh, I, I did a kind of a 75 hard. I have been really, really clean with diet and zero alcohol since Christmas. And I will say that it's, oh my God, the difference in your body, the way you wake up, uh, the way you approach training and work, the removal of the booze of the sauce has been great. So I'll say hello to it really, really quickly. And then I'm going to just as quickly say goodbye to it. And yeah. I feel great. Feel strong. Feel healthy. I'm not even like on the verge, you know, usually in preseason, you're so sore, so tight that you're like on the verge of getting hurt. And I'm on the verge of just breaking new lifting records and feeling really strong and motivated because instead of, you know, getting bored, I, anytime I get that pull to, to be bored, I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to do more pushups. I'm going to do a couple more shoulder raises. I'm going to get in there and work on my ankle mobility. And I did that last night. I did like 10, 15 last night. I was sitting there doing a 20 second bench press, one rep, 20 seconds and it felt great yeah you and i have talked about this a little bit and it does change everything you know i'm not gonna say that you need to go sober i i don't think that that's anything that it's not my job to tell you to do that but yeah if you have goals that you haven't reached yet and you haven't tried giving up alcohol you got to question yourself that's kind of yep. where i was at you know, I've been complaining for the last three, four years that I haven't made it onto the, the main circuit of the AVP, but I've been overweight. I've been out of shape. I've been drinking more than I've been training. <laughs> And, you know, at the end of the day, you got to start realizing where your questions are going. And I, I'm very fired up for the season. And I think going through that and fighting through and just making sure that your body is in optimal position is definitely the way to go. So happy to hear that you'll be uh, hopping back off the sauce after we're on the oh, sauce yeah. tomorrow. But, There's no, I mean, I feel um, too good every single yeah. day. Like I don't crawl out of bed. I like I pop out of bed. Right. That's a feeling that I'm not I'm not willing to trade back.
So right. I'm right there with you. And it's always good to have an accountability buddy, you know, and uh, whenever I start to question, I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> it's looking good in the fridge or it's looking good on the, on the I know. I was table. similar the other night, the other yeah. night I was like, well, I made it to the same week. So yeah. I was like, looking, I was like, what if we just had one old fashioned? And then I thought about you and I was just like, no, if I slide, then I'll give him permission to slide. Right. And you know, the combination of, of having the two, it's just, it's too much. So we got, a few more hours, you know, yeah. we'll have some fun I, tomorrow. And I got we'll your back, back buddy. The, get back to the word. Perfect. So happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Uh, this is probably airing the two months after St. Patrick's Day, but for us, we're in a good jolly mood. <laughs> yeah. And uh, speaking of the Irish, we're practicing against Japan again today. <laughs> Speaking of the Irish, Thank yeah, you. somebody <laughs> that we have to get on a plane to play. Yeah, I think that it's pretty cool. The opportunities that we get out here in, in Southern California with all these teams coming here to train for their preseasons is really, really awesome. And I think in the last three weeks, I've gotten the chance to train with Latvia and Japan. And mm-hmm. it's like, I never would imagine that I was I would get those opportunities. So it's pretty cool. Day, we are going to talk about, I know it's a long intro, but we're going to talk about the vertical jump and arm swing mechanics. We're not talking about hitting the ball. We're going to talk about how to get yourself in the air. Somebody who studied exercise science for a long time and continued into performance enhancement, specializing in volleyball coaching. I've seen so many vertical jumps that don't exist. You know, there's no maximum vertical jump for certain people because they're not using their arms properly. And a lot of people don't understand that. You have to be able to sync your arms with your body, with your jump. And today we're going to get into what the arms do, what they actually do to and for your body and when the right time to actually to throw them is and all of the phases of that i've been for the past week or so i started rewriting a big time blog and you might know but i have an ambition to write a volleyball book and you know, I, I just started with a little blog post and so far it's turned into 30 pages and 8,000 words, which is crazy to me. But there's so much detail that if you want to get out there, if, if you want to create the absolute resource and the best book on this, it's going to take detail. So for those of you who are interested in that, I would love to hear your feedback on if you would get a book just based on just on mechanics of volleyball technique and strategy. And uh, maybe you'll be the first on my list to send the book to. But we got into arm swing mechanics and how to jump last night. Well, we, like the people, me and my voice is. And we're going to talk about that today because I think it's a really interesting topic that surprisingly few volleyball players can do well is throw their arms to sink them with their jump. All right. We are going to talk about arm swing mechanics for the vertical jump. And the first thing that I really want people to, to learn about is we're going to talk about the approach jump and where your arms should be as you're jumping. And we're going to try to do this with our words instead of with showing too much. If you're listening on the podcast version and you want to see kind of us demoing a little bit, then you can go ahead and check out the YouTube version of this. But we're going to talk about a four-step approach. So when you take that first step of your four-step approach, if you're a right-handed player, it should be a slow, small right step. When you're there, your hands should be kind of dangling in front of you and relaxed. In the beginning, people who are learning this, uh, we tell them to get their arms in front of them right? And they kind of stiffen them and they lock them. If your arms are going to be stiff throughout your approach, you will not have velocity because you're not going to allow your muscles to stretch. You're not going to create elastic energy. And that same elastic energy that we need to actually throw the arms into the ground and lift us into the air, the speed that we have there is going to carry into our actual hit, which we're not going to talk about today. We're not going to talk about the hit. We're just going to talk about the jump. But if you start with tense arms, that tension will continue and everything will be slower and you won't jump as high. You won't hit as hard. So on that first slow, small right step, your arms should be dangling in front of you and loose. That's the easiest start. You know, I don't, one of the common mistakes is people, especially in the beginning, they use running arms. So their elbows bend and they look like they're running or sometimes they kind of come up or with real beginners and and people who have serious mechanics problems, they kind of just start raising their arms already, running to the ball with four steps to prepare for that spike. But your arms are going to have to go down and then back behind you and then swing up forward. So if you're approaching the ball with your elbows bent or with your arms up, 
then that's going to be a serious problem for your vertical leap. So number one recommendation, go out today. As soon as you hear this, the next volleyball session you have, warm up, put your phone on the side of the court, use the horizontal uh, landscape version and record yourself in slow motion. Just a few spikes, get five of them so that you actually have a visual of what you're doing and where your arms are. Okay. So record yourself. And that's the first step. Hands dangling in front and loose. As you get into your second step, your left step, that step's going to be bigger. Your shoulders are going to drop forward a little bit because this is where you're going to start accelerating. And if your shoulders aren't forward, at least in the middle and at the end of your left step, then you can't accelerate. You're like pulling yourself, right? So you have to push forward off of that. Now, when you do that, when you get to your left step and your shoulders get forward for a small second, you're going to kind of look like an NFL wide receiver, right? You're waiting at the line. Your knee is loaded in front of your toes. You're kind of looking down the line of scrimmage, but you want that forward lean. And what your hands are going to do is they might raise a tiny bit. And at this position, we're going to call it the shopping cart or the lawnmower position. That's where you want to be. So your arms are in front. During this phase, too many people do this up motion where they throw their hands up to shoulder level or to eye level because they've been told, hey, I need to throw my arms back. So what they do in error is they, in order to increase the velocity of their arms back, their, their mind is right, but they just execute it wrong. They throw their arms up and then back. Now, before you keep going, I think that that's a, a pretty big component. Anytime we see those arms raise really high during and after that second step, that's a huge issue. And I think your arms, like that shopping cart position that you're talking about, I think your arms almost naturally go to that position if you trust your body positioning. You know, if you mm -hmm. get that shoulder, that chest over your knees a little bit and you find that wide receiver position that you're talking about, I think that's a really good analogy. It's really easy to picture. But I think as you're going through those steps, your arms will naturally kind of come up. Cause even when I'm teaching it, I'm like, keep your arms down to try to fix that, that extreme lift up. It's hard for me to keep my arms completely by my side. You know, my arms almost naturally come forward. I think stressing that idea of not physically lifting your arms is important, but allowing them to come forward. I think it turns into a natural movement. So I yeah. just wanted to add that as well. You know, I, I always caution, I think you to say natural, because when we talked about like throwing Growing, right yeah. being able to to say I fall like, onto this trap what a lot do people you know what have we done through playing sports our entire life and somebody mm -hmm. who kind of got involved in ball sports when they're in their mid 20s or 30s or 40s things have to be learned that become so automatic in elite players that you're you're kind of shocked like there is a right way to walk there's a right way you know or a best most efficient way there's a best way to run as a kid i was just like what do track coaches even do when you're bad what do you you run more when you don't listen to the coach you're already running and i didn't understand until after college i was like oh my god there are actual running mechanics you can teach somebody how to run i thought speed was this ingrained thing so i always go back to that and i want to like talk to the people who are really getting involved in sports and in volleyball for the first time but also to be able to teach our coaches in our audience when somebody doesn't have a, a clue <laughs> how do we get them closer there this is kind of different because i used to work for velocity sports performance and there we were training nfl and nhl guys major league baseball guys and for nfl a big component of their combine testing is the vertical jump it's just a standing vertical jump which means they stand in place and they squat down jump up and touch as high as they can it's a measurement of explosiveness for that we do tell them to throw their arms up high stretch your body out stack your core and get this violent downward arm swing because that allows you to super load your legs when you go down hard your legs actually fire at a harder rate and so you do want that maximum velocity but when we talk about volleyball the problem with embracing that arms up and then down is that becomes your motor pattern. That means that in order to think that your body is jumping or accomplishing the jump job, your body now says, okay, jumping equals arms up, arms back and forward. So when you get into the emergency situations where you need to rush through your approach or you need to go a little bit faster, you're going to have that extra movement that is not giving you a ton of extra maximum height. And I think that's, that's really important for people to know because we also, we're also creating not just downward force, but we're also creating forward force. And we'll get into that in just a second. But when you're using your arms, they are going to swing you down 
down and they're actually going to load you forward and your last step of the approach is going to stop that and translate it into the air. Back to arms. This is why it took like 8,000 pages to get through yeah. chapter one <laughs> or 8,000 words. So your arms are now in front in that shopping cart position. They're not throwing up above your head and they're not actively going up first, right? From there, as you push hard, and when I say hard, I mean hard, you're going to push hard off of your left step and your hips should be already kind of low. You shouldn't be standing tall anymore. You're going to drive downward. I always say it's like kind of like a Corvette, you know, when you increase your speed, the, the Corvette should actually get a little bit lower. That's why that car is shaped like it is. It gets a little bit lower to the ground, decreases wind resistance, so it increases speed. But when you drive downward, what that does is that starts to help you load your hips and legs faster and in a better way. One of the biggest mistakes that we see people make is their knee angle when they jump is way too open. People jump with their hips too high and it becomes a hop instead of a jump. So off of your left step, when your arms are in that shopping cart position and you drive forward, your hips are going to actually go down and you're going to get to about a 90 degree leg angle. Okay. But arms between that left step and your step close or left right, left. When you finish, your arms have to throw back and throw back high. So if you're standing at home or if you're doing anything right now and you're listening to this, stand up, keep yourself nice and tall and close to your body. Don't let them flare out, but close to your body, just throw your hands back loose. I like to say hands. I don't like to say arms because when you say arms, people's brains turn on the muscle in their arms and then they tense their a little bit. I want my hands to throw. And when you do that, if you have good mobility, your hands are going to get to about your shoulder blade height behind you. And you're probably going to feel that little pingy stretch right under your shoulders or between your shoulders and your chest, right? But that motion has to happen. And a lot of people give the key of, hey, try to touch your wrists when you go back with your fingers. So if you throw your hands back behind you and your palms kind of face up behind you, they say, touch your wrist to give you that little bit of extra stretch. And it kind of helps put the wrist into a relaxed position instead of, you know, holding your hands like, what is an anchor man or what do I do with my hands? Oh, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> So standing up tall, that's the key there is, is feeling that stretch. And if you're not feeling that stretch during your jump, then you know you're not using your arms hard enough, violent enough, fast enough. Okay. So stand up tall, throw those arms. Now that maximum hit there, when you get them to maximum height, that maximum height is going to happen just before, barely before, and during the heel contact of your third step, the right foot of your right left so when you take that video in slow motion when your right foot your right heel is striking the ground for the last time your arms should be the highest they have ever been behind you that is a very easy way to know if you're sinking yourself properly right are they at their maximum height when your right heel is striking the ground boom if, if you can just get that to match and you just repeat it in slow motion keep filming yourself and keep redoing it that will that'll give you success we'll say that do you specifically focus on how far back your arms go when you're doing your approach like is that something you're consciously thinking about when i'm training yes when i'm working on arm sinking when i'm working on my vertical jump like in the gym and there's no ball yeah i open that range as hard as i can right if i were in a like coaching situation or a, a learning situation and my coach is saying hey we got to sink your arms then i'm going to think about that nonstop until it becomes automatic you know until mm -hmm. we've automated that process if you're not if you're noticing that you're not hitting any of the points that we're talking about in this session i would say dedicate a couple weeks at least to resyncing your arms until it becomes automatic. Yeah, and I'm wondering if that could be almost like a warm up thing as well, because I feel like once your body feels that mode, like, you know, this week I've been focusing a lot on opening up. You know, I literally spent one day on it. And then yesterday at training, I felt like I was finding it a lot more naturally. Just, you were hitting just, hard. Yeah, yeah, just from that one day of really focusing on opening up and kind of taking away the idea of errors for a second, just being like, okay, were you able to open up? So I think that whenever it becomes something that's biomechanical, like this arm swing on our approach and getting it far back, I think that we forget to work on it so much because it's mm. such a quick motion, but it can create such big changes. But it's hard to focus on like so i was i was curious if you do it like during matches because sometimes it's hard for me to even remember when i'm walking to practice <laughs> 
you know, I'm not. And the whole like sequencing thing that we're talking about, something that was conscious for me a couple of years ago was the emergency situation when I needed to get on a ball quickly. For example, I get a kind of crap set in a scramble play. I know that the blocker is peeling. So instead of taking a full arm load and jumping to maximum height and loading, I'm just going to, I call it a tap and slap. I'm just going to kind of gather my elbows quick and hit that ball like 50% of the way into my jump. And it's not even a max jump because I can't take that long because I need to get that ball to the deep part of the court before the blocker peels. And there's a lot of those bang bang plays in volleyball that you can use that emergency technique of not max jumping not trying to get as high as you can, just trying to get on the ball and get it to the back line as quickly as you can so that the defense can't set themselves up and be comfortable. You want them to be scrambling when you're scrambling. And I think people try to recover themselves on their side of the court. And while they are trying to recover and play something safe, they now have allowed the defense to set up a really strong base and they're going to come back hard. So if I'm scrambling, make sure that I rush the play to make sure the defense has to scramble. Like that. And that's when I went through the process of saying like, man, I can't load my arms here. I can't get a full depth jump. And so for me, that was part of my process. I like that. And then now you're able to realize what the different jumps feel like. Yes. You know, because and I think that that's big because I remember I'm thinking back to practice yesterday and like you had that one play that we finished on where my hands got a little quick. And you were like, you didn't have the, you weren't holding the ball as much as as you normally do. And that was one of those plays Mm -hmm. where you didn't have the time to go through that natural swing. So I had picked up on it before you said it, because I noticed that your jump looked a lot different. It's Mm -hmm. important to realize what those different swings feel like so that you can realize where you are. Because if you were in system and had enough time to go through that natural arm swing and get them all the way back, but you chose not to, now that's a problem that you need to solve, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact that you were able to get up there quick and put that ball away, you realize the situation that you were in. Yeah. So, and that the, you know, sense. going back to like the full arm swing, if my body's system of jump equals arms up, then back, then forward, that's something where, you know, I'm going to run out of time there because mm-hmm. by the time my arms go up, this ball's already on top of me and I'm just going to slap it out of my neck or something. Yeah. And that's when we start seeing a lot of these kind of push arm swings because they don't have time to load and go through this whole natural swing. Yes. Let's go back to where we were, right? So your Mm -hmm. right foot, your right heel is striking the ground and your hands are at max height behind you. Now it has to be your heel. There are a lot of toe jumpers out there. People who on their last two steps, their balls of their feet or their toes hit the ground first. Uh, This is, this will just destroy your vertical right off the bat. You're going to put such strain on your patellar tendon. You're going to have all of the resistance in your quads, just trying to stop you from going forward. And essentially you'll have to break using your quads. Then you'll have to drop down to use your glutes. And now you've already lost momentum, right? And usually we'll see those people kind of like almost trip over themselves and lean forward instead of gathering and being able to load their arms and shoulders back. Like the toe jumpers are the ones that you see with their shoulders out in front of their body. Their arm can't pull back just because their toes hit the ground on the step close instead of rolling your right heel and then popping the left ball of your foot onto the ground. So very, very important for jump mechanics is the foot sequence going in there. But when your arms are now coming through and they're coming down, right, as your left foot is on the ground, so your right foot is loaded, you're in that deep, like 90, I want to say deep, but you know, just slightly above 90 degree knee bend, and your left foot is now hitting the ground and on the ground, the center of your mass is over your back leg, lots of detail that you guys don't need right now, but your arms will be at six o'clock. So imagine your arms are hanging straight down and they are flying through, right? They're at six o'clock while your right and your left foot are on the ground. While your left foot is on the ground, your arms are at six o'clock and then they're going to carry you up. What that does, when your arms go back like this, they're actually going to throw, they increase the engagement of your leg and hip muscles, as well as like erector spinae, um, which is like your core, right? So when you throw from here, you actually turn your glutes and leg muscles on more. 
you throw your arms hard into the ground, that basically super loads or increases the force on your leg muscles. That transfers to the ground, and then the ground gives us the energy back up. So that for the people who don't get their arms back to maximum extension, or if they can increase their height, they're actually not turning their legs on as much as they possibly could. Some people might know this, some people might not, but you can generate more power, more force through what's called eccentric loading. So your legs can create more force when you're choosing a weight or resisting a weight that is heavier that, than you can actually put up. So let's say that the most that you could squat go down and go up is 225 pounds. If you decide to put 250 or 275 on your back and you hold it up and you just go down and you go down as slow as you possibly can controlling it, but it's too heavy for your body to actually go back up. This is basically an eccentric load where we're going down and your legs are working harder than they could possibly work with any concentric movement, with any upward movement. These are the type of workouts that will leave you sore for four or five days because of the amount of strain. And if you want to increase your strength quickly, that is a very good way to do it, but it's so destructive to your body that you just need long, long, long recovery days because it's on the central nervous system. Now, when your arms are back and they're firing into the ground, that is increasing that eccentric load, right? So your legs have to break harder than they could without your arms. And that's why it's super loading you. That's why it's able to generate that lift. It gives the ground more force. It tightens through the abs and it increases the pressure in your abdominal cavity. So long as you're not leaned over and hunched over with your torso, like you need to have a good kind of steady upright spine. I'm not going to say upright body position, right? Because like even when we squat in a squat rack, we're leaning forward slightly. Right? We're not, our spine isn't straight up, but you're also not bending over. So very detailed, very important stuff to know. But the arm swing, just know that when you get it all the way back and violently bring it all the way through with straight elbows, not hinged elbows, you cannot hinge the elbows, that is going to increase the load and the force that your legs can produce and it'll help you jump higher. And then as you lift up, your arms keep coming through. And by the time they get to about chest level in front of you and they're carrying into your jump, now your legs finally start actually extending the knees start opening up, your hips start coming through, and now you're kind of unweighted with the arm. So you've super loaded it downward motion and you're unweighting on the upward motion and that allows you to get that maximum height. So that is a very fast and as little science as I can <laughs> as, as I can give to, to give a full explanation. That's how you generate height with your arms using your approach jump. Does that make sense? Did I? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, for somebody who, like, normally when you start talking all sciencey, I just, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude, just tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think it makes sense. And it's just crazy because especially when we think about approaches, that's where we see a lot of unique styles. You know, most of the time when we're looking about, when we're thinking about passing, when we're thinking about setting, serving, there are a lot of tendencies that tend to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, like whenever we're looking at beginners, we're like, okay, this is probably how they're going to serve. But with approaching and jumping and how people think about generating speed and generating power, it can look a lot different just because people's bodies are so different. You know, their hips or maybe somebody's hips are tight. Maybe their knees are, are a little funky. Maybe they don't even realize that they need to be focusing on their arms. I think you did a really good job of really breaking it down to what each of these steps should feel like, what your arms should feel like, and then where your focus should be. Because I think that that's, that's a, probably the biggest thing that I picked up on is that sometimes we're not even thinking about the right thing. We're wondering why we're not getting the power on our jumps and everything like that. But then we go back and you watch this type of video and you're like, oh, well, maybe if I focus on my body tilt when I'm going to swing, when I'm going into that third step, maybe I think about throwing my arm, my hands back. And I, I really like that you focus on the hands because I do think that that has a really big change. And then really throwing those hands forward to get that maximum velocity is really important. Something that I like that you say at, at clinics and 
camps a lot whenever you're teaching this section is when your arms are coming forward or backwards, act like you're throwing water off of your hands or sand. Yeah. I think that giving people that cue and, and that idea of how violent that arm throw is can really set you up. And if you don't have the ability to do that violent throw, then your timing's either off or your body positioning is off. So we just need to be able to experiment around those and figure out where you need to be in order to get that. But yeah, I think you did a good job dumbing it down for us normal folk. <laughs> <laughs> I get so geeked out. So much fun. Like even last night I was just reviewing and I was going through all of the journals and articles on the arm swing in the vertical jump and the approach jump. And it's just always fun to dive back in there, refresh a little bit of, of the language and just, you know, see if, see if anything new has come come about if anything has discovered anything new about the body or the sequencing or the muscle activation because there were there were a bunch of mistakes kind of early on that the the arms created lift you know that they really lifted you up and that's that's a small part of it at the end and a big one is that they're actually driving you into the ground and driving you forward so they increase the speed for your legs and the activation for those of you who don't know this is a lot of what we do specifically for players in our 60 day max vertical jump program so when you sign up for our courses our online courses you get access to our vertical jump program, our nutrition programming, and all of our master classes in volleyball technique and strategy. But you're hearing it now. You just heard a lot of great information that you can use. What we do in there is you actually have to post your jumps. You have to post your approaches. You take them in slow motion. And then our team of coaches coaches you on your jump mechanics, not just the uh, kind of me and Brandon talking to each other, but we get in there and we actively go on to your posts and comments. And we are, this last week was the 10th week for our big group going through which means that it's our testing week for Max Vertical. And one of our girls, a uh, big shout out to Carter. I think she's in Alabama. She added five inches to her Let's go. jump in 10 weeks. You know, it's detailed coaching. It's hard work. She was one of the ones that actually engaged. We knew she did every workout. When we mm -hmm. asked her to post something, she posted it. She put it up there and we got to see it and we got to give her detailed feedback and you know, for a woman to, in 10 weeks, for a woman to increase her vertical by five inches is a gigantic success. So pumped for her. I'm also pumped for uh, Jason Lavelle, who is in our coaching group. He had similar, I think he, he might have added, darn it, I have it somewhere here, but he might have added eight to his vert. He, God. And here's the thing, like consistency. Right. Maybe he was going to the gym. Maybe he had a workout plan. But was it focused? Did it build up to a point? Some of our players just don't have a plan, so they don't ever start, and they haven't worked out in however long. You know, we talked about that at the beginning of the podcast. Like, you need consistency. You need accountability, and you need a program that you can trust. And so he was admittedly, he said, like, I was being a little bit lazy the last two years. So the first thing we did, he goes, I used to be able to dunk a basketball. He goes, I wanted to just be able to dunk a basketball again. He's like, I'm not 60 years old. I can do this. And... He, again, one of the ones who posted the videos so that we could comment, fix his technique, fix his mechanics, and he just saw massive, massive change. That gets me fired up, you know? Anytime, like, the 10th week comes along and somebody posts their, their celebratory numbers, that's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I get cool. Snapped. So Jason and Carter, uh, if you guys are listening, huge congratulations and good freaking job doing it, getting after it and posting and keeping yourselves accountable in the same way that, that we hold ourselves accountable. So yeah. proud of those players. And for those of you that don't like, whenever we hear that number three inches, five inches, eight inches added to your vertical, like, yes, it might be somewhat of a, like normally when we think of three inches, we're like, oh, that's not very bit, not very much. But like personally for me, I notice when I see a two inch, difference in my mm -hmm. vertical like it changes my game it allows me to start siding out at a higher percentage and when you start talking anything at three or more like you are a different volleyball player you're not going to be playing the same way and if you are then you got to realize that you have a lot you're you just got a lot more dangerous because now you're you might be hitting over blockers you might be hitting because i mean how big is a is a female's hand i don't know <laughs> 
four or five inches, you know? So if you're thinking about like, there, it's not females hands aren't very big, but if you're a female and you've added five inches to your vertical and your approach vertical, now you oh. possibly could be hitting over top of some people. Yeah. You went like, from being somebody who should never, ever block to yeah. Huh, now okay. you're, you're challenging people at the net. It's truly game changing. <laughs> like yeah. that's, that's really cool. And congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm fired up for them. I'm trying to find the post and, and, and Jason's numbers. Carter started her approach jump at 8'7", and her testing yesterday was 9 feet. We have a lateral shuffle drill, an agility drill. She went from 29 seconds to 23 seconds, so 6 seconds faster on our on our agility <laughs> drill. Which, I mean, just speaking like defensively, yeah, I can do for your game. Serve, receive. Then, if you feel like you're late to balls a lot when you're passing, now you're not late. <laughs> yep. Like, that's awesome. Jason Lavelle, week 10 testing. Vertical jump plus 10 inches. This is atypical. Okay. Right. He went from 9-1 to 9 to 9-11. He used to be an athlete. So his body just needed to remember where he was. He needed to unlock himself and get moving. You know, he went from not doing anything to working out three and four times a week under our programming and that is what that is what that change looks like you mm -hmm. know when you actually get going and you keep at it for 10 weeks straight so okay. yeah is he going to get 10 inches every 10 weeks no but getting off your ass and getting into a program will help you get immediate huge benefits. And then once you got those, now you're looking at smaller percentages going forward. So his next round, uh, we're gonna go through a lot more single leg stuff and strengthening with him. I'm actually gonna get on a phone call with him in the next couple of days and reprogram him so that he can keep progressing and keep adding to that explosiveness. But he's not gonna add 10 inches again the second 60 days. Right. He might get another two or three. Looking forward to that. I like it. All right. So, guys, uh, if you want to join the 60 day max vertical jump program, you go ahead to betterbeach.com forward slash 60 day max vertical jump. We're going to include it in the show notes and it's definitely in the description underneath. You could buy it as a recorded course, but we recommend that you become one of our player members so that we can actively coach you. You can post your videos and you get real, real, real custom feedback and coaching. Go ahead and check it out if you want to see huge changes in your game, uh, just like Jason and Carter. All right, uh, if you're sticking around for the Q&A, let's rock. All right. What do you think about the development in volleyball that the elbow is dropping more directly after the approach at the Usain Bolt pose as we say, like the Brazilians yeah. do? So the the when they're hitting the elbow, quote unquote, high versus dropping it straight back so that you have a straight line from your left arm to your right elbow. We think that the development, Tobias, is based on sound biomechanics and injury prevention, and it is showing huge results in a lot of our players. Now, historically, people thought that you should get your elbow up high in order to gain power and make sure that your height, the elbow high should have been, from all those coaches, should have been elbow high on contact that is very different from drawing your elbow back high when you put your elbows let's say above your ears and then you try to squeeze your shoulder blades together you can't really activate you can't get the distance for your shoulder blades so when you drop your arms now to a t position and then you squeeze your shoulder blades you can get your elbows a lot further back that increases the stretch in your pectoral muscles and that gives you more space to generate forward more momentum. So it's like kind of the difference between if you're in a fight, a jab or a hook or a hook, you can generate more power because you have more space. You're also getting your hips behind it, but allowing you that shoulder to pull back so that it's even with your shoulder girdle is going to prevent injuries. As soon as people in our camps make this one change, they're like, that doesn't hurt my shoulder at all. And it's like, yep, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So instead of this high elbow position when we load, drawing it back so that my elbow is even with my shoulder girdle, or I kind of have a, a straight line, exactly like he's saying, like Usain Bolt, a straight line from my hitting elbow to my left or my up hand. And that is a start to hitting healthier with less pain and more power. Yeah. The only time, just to add a little bit to that, the only time that I've, when I think back to my coaching, especially when I'm thinking about 
beginners. And beginners tend to have this kind of arm swing where when they come through, sometimes they don't think about getting this elbow high, you know? So they almost come through and it just becomes this shot put type of swing. Maybe some coaches, and, and I think I've probably done this, I tend to experiment a lot with my private lessons, but maybe some coaches are talking about getting this elbow high. So to encourage that high elbow as the swing is going, it's definitely, it think that natural motion of pulling back here, it just allows you to load up more and generate more power and more speed throughout the process of your swing. But maybe some coaches are teaching that high swing, especially I could see it maybe happening for juniors a little bit at the, at first, just to encourage that high elbow and high contact point. But so that's something but I'll, if you're I'll start to qu pay. Quickly get them out of that. Yeah. So that. That should be like an individual type feedback, not a whole yeah. team. And the, the injury and the strain you now put on your shoulder, the front side of your shoulder, those high elbow players are the ones that consistently get that little pain in the front right of their shoulder, that bicep tendon, because you're, you are pinching more. Mm -hmm. And now because you don't have the space and the stretch from your pecs, the only thing that you're relying on is forward strength as opposed to real flexibility through your pecs. Really recommend that if you do go to that feedback where you draw that elbow back high, just reset them, get them out of that quickly once their elbow is contacting the ball high. You know, But when you see NFL quarterbacks, they draw back here. When you mm -hmm. throw 60 yards, you know, you're here, you're not here. And that alone should tell you what we're doing. Yes, I know that volleyball players have to extend higher, but if an arm, if a quarterback can generate more power and velocity from here than they can here, then so can volleyball players. We just translate it up instead of straight forward. All right. Next. So just, yeah, it's changing with the, you say the Germans are, are still mm -hmm. playing like this and they're, you know. There's some success to be had. And are we hitting at 100% maximum in uh, beach volleyball? Not really. Does it take a tiny bit longer to like get through that opening phase? Yes, but it also helps your arm come through faster. So yeah, take a look. There's a few studies on it that have been done with it. And you know, one, one of the guys that really talks about this a lot is Isaac Newball of Torque VB, T-R-O-Q VB. Um, he talks a lot about it with biomechanics. But we want to say, like, for us, for what we know, draw that elbow back so it's even with your shoulder girdle instead of higher than shoulder girdle where you're going to pinch things. From Edible Bears. I like that name. So you're supposed to be jumping from the balls of your feet, question mark? Here's the sequence. Here's your right step, okay? So your heel, your right heel is going to strike, and then you're going to roll your foot all the way to the front. As that happens, as your foot is rolling to the strike, then your left foot is going to kind of have a midfoot stomp. You're not going to really hit hard with your heel on your left. You've already braked with your right foot. So it's right heel rolls and left foot stomps. And yeah, that left foot action is going to be heavy on the ball, but I wouldn't say like, Hey, get to the ball of your foot. Cause then you might get too high and maybe your toes are going to stab into the ground. Your calf, your gastroc can't really flex. So I say midfoot, and that usually encourages that flexion, that dorsiflexion that we need for that play. But no, don't jump onto the balls of your feet, just your left foot. Well, the last step will have that midfoot stomp. And then we'll go ahead and make this a, a two-parter. But uh, if my, and this relates to the podcast we did today a lot. If my arms aren't reaching that far back, I'm assuming she's talking about in that load position where we're throwing our arms back. Mm -hmm. Is it a mobility issue? So maybe do you have a stretch or two that people can think about if they're feeling limited? Um, I got one question while JD is, is with us. Is there a way to join your vertical program without coaching without having it on Facebook? And the answer is yes. Just go to betteratbeach.com forward slash store and you'll be able to buy it as a standalone recorded course. And just so you know, it's not just a template program. You actually do the workouts along with the videos. So we're giving feedback along with your workout. It's not just, hey, here's the sheet. Here are the reps and sets. Of course, that's included, but you're also getting the, the work along videos that you follow along with. Go to betteratbeach.com forward slash store and you'll be able to find that, JD. Now, stretch for mobility, easy. I mean, easy, easy, easy. Go to any doorway or wall. 
hold your arm at 90 degrees, like in a scarecrow position and push your elbow against that pole doorway or wall and push your chest through until you get that chest stretch. Opening that up is going to be big. If you're into kind of yoga and you guys are looking from the side here, this clasp behind our shoulders and then opening up here, right? When you clasp your hand behind your shoulders or behind your low back, and then you try to raise them, that'll start increasing some things for you, right? But any sort of uh, flexibility, mobility exercises, guys, if you want in two more weeks, maybe three, we're starting our athletic foundations program again. It is a seven day mobility program to get your athletic foundations in order before you get into a strength phase or a lifting phase. So that's going to be coming up. So anytime you see us uh, promoting or showing athletic foundations program, that will give you every bit of mobility exercise you can do. We got to run, brother. All right. Check out for any new articles that we're going to be coming out with. And we definitely have under our attacking playlist, we definitely have a lot of those attacking and vertical jump on our playlists on YouTube. You can see a lot more information and you can see it demonstrated, which is going to be nice. All right. I just saw your name at the bottom i like it <laughs> thank you and as always if you guys just want our 36 favorite beach volleyball drills to do on your own uh just go to betterbeach.com on the home page and you can download that for free you get on our email list and we send you some goodies every week we send you a free lesson every week so guys thank you so much for joining i, I really like this one this is fun yeah a lot of good information yeah. we'll see you guys on the sand